Will the Chinese stock market crash? If you want a simple answer to that question, yes. <laughs> How do I know that the Chinese market is ready to crash? Well, I think it started in, let's see, in uh, 2008 when I read this book. Uh, it was, uh, it's called The Trillion Dollar Meltdown by Charles R. Morris. And it told me in 2008 that the U.S. stock market was going to crash because of the subprime crisis. And then and in 2010, it all became apparent to me why it crashed when I read this book. It's The, the Big Short by Michael Lewis. If you haven't read the book and you're not inclined to read books, go to Netflix and, and watch the movie, and you're going to learn why the subprime crisis occurred and why the market crashed, and you'll understand why the Chinese market is going to crash. Then if you're really inclined to understand the world that you live in, read this book. This is uh, The Accidental Superpower. It gives you the history of the development of the world's economies and where China fits into it and what mistakes they've made and what perils they're going to face and how their economy is structured. And then if you really want to understand how the Chinese government got to or economy got to where it is, read this book. Uh, there's a lot of reading here. But if you really want to know what's going to happen in the Chinese market, just read this weekend's Wall Street Journal. It tells you everything you need to know. Here, it tells you that, yes, the Chinese market's going to crash, and here's what China's going to do about it. And then it leaves it to you to decide what you're going to do about it. That's what this video is all about, uh, connecting all these little dots I just gave you so that you can have a vision of what's going to happen in the next three months, before the end of the year. And then you can make a decision as to what you're going to do about it relative to your portfolio, because really that's what's important, isn't it? It's you don't really care if the Chinese market crashes or explodes or, or ignites or, or whatever. You don't care. What you care is how is it going to affect your investments? And even maybe better, how can you profit off of what is going to happen? It's all about connecting the dots. It's all about educating yourself so that you can see what happened, what, what is going to happen before it happens, and interpret what is going to happen. Now, you might say, well, it's too late. It's too late. It's already happened. No, it isn't. Lehman Brothers filed bankruptcy, and the market didn't really crash for another three months. So it's not too late. It's all about paying attention to what's going on around you. And that's in this video. I want to give you some tidbits so that you can go forward uh, the rest of the day so that you can make your moves tomorrow, Monday, to prepare your portfolio for what's about to happen. Okay, first of all, I'm only here to educate you uh, and entertain you. I am quite entertaining. Um, I'm not here as your financial advisor. And let's get that out of the way, and then let's get down to the nitty gritty. By the way, my name's Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. See you in a second. Best of Us Investors presents Carrie Griegmeier. Okay, you've probably heard about uh, Evergrande's situation. Evergrande is the largest real estate developer in uh, China. And because of the coronavirus, and I've told you many times, the most important event that has happened in your lifetime is the coronavirus. Because of the coronavirus, their business is imploding. And that is to say, they had a business in, in 17, 18, 19, 20, 19, 
that all they had to do was make arrangements and get the permits to buy a piece of land from a region, that's kind of what they call their states in China, and, and pay the fees and say, we're going to build a 30-story building and we're going to put 300 uh, apartments in there and they're going to be available for, for purchase immediately and move in in two to three years. And they would sell out in five hours. And it's because the Chinese economy, the Chinese investment mentality is the best and safest investment you can make in China today is real estate. Why is that? And that is because they have, I think it's 1.4 billion people give you some representation. We have uh, 350 million, and most of them live out in the hinterland, and most of them are moving into the big cities, and they need a place to live. So if I know this flood of people is coming, and I've got some extra money because I've worked hard as a, as, as a retail clerk, I need to buy one of these apartments, never move into it, just hold it, waiting for the people to come from the hinterland to come and buy it from me at an uh, uh, appreciated price. That's the mentality. 97% of the assets owned by the people in China who aren't farmers is real estate. And that's how they, they don't buy stocks. It's, it's comparable to you buying Tesla in anticipation of an appreciating value. They buy real estate. Does that make sense? Okay, makes sense. Except in March of 2020, a little virus flew out of Wunan, China, affected the world, and shut the world down. So ever, uh, Evergrande's sales stopped. Now, Evergrande is not the only developer. There's about 20 of them. Evergrande is the only one we know about right now. And they're backed into a corner. Just last week, they missed a bond interest payment of $83 million. This was a dollar-denominated bond. It's not a yuan-dominated bond. So it's foreigners who are investing in China, and the debt behind that $83 million payment amounts to $2.3 billion. Now, that's not all the U.S. debt, the dollar debt that's wrapped up into this. There's a total of $19 billion U.S. dollars invested in just Evergrande's. That has nothing to do with the other 19 builders that are in the same predicament, but we don't know about yet, okay? It's kind of... It's kind of like in, 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 in this book, uh, or no, in this book, we learned about the Lehman Brothers situation. And then once we learned about Lehman Brothers, we, we learned about Bear Stearns. And then we learned about AGI, who had all the insurance. And then we learned about Mass Mutual. And then we learned about GM. Why GM? They filed bankruptcy because of the subprime prices. Because people who had lost their houses could no longer buy cars. That's called the ripple effect. So this is not about Evergrande, and it is not about the Chinese stock market. It's about the world economy. And watch the movie. You'll figure it out. So with that being said, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, the, before we get into that, Let's talk about the ripple effect a bit more. Bit more. There's, there's 20 of these substantial uh, real estate development companies who are all wrapped up in this. Where did they get their money to do this? Where did they get, what is it, $300 billion that is wrapped up into this. Some of it is in bonds, and some of it is money they owe contractors, and some of it is money that they, they, owe, they owe other people, uh, other investors. Who are these investors? Well, 
uh, I suspect they're the wealthy of China. Who are the wealthy of China? Well, probably the people who are part of the Big Nine. That's another book you need to read. Um, the people from Alibaba, the people from Tencent, and the people from Baidu. They're probably some of the investors in this, as are some of our hedge funds, as are some of our bankers here in the United States. They're all involved in this. Okay, so there will be a ripple effect. We saw that, as I said, in the U.S. subprime crisis. We saw that the whole market went down. It wasn't just real estate. It, in, it, it included everybody. And some people got hurt worse than others. So we know that's going to happen. Now, then the question becomes, okay, what is the Chinese government going to do? Well, the Chinese government probably read this book. And so they know what to do. They need to bail them out, just like Paulson did. He was the, I guess, the Treasury or the, the, the Fed head of the, he bailed them out. It took a while. Lehman failed. Um, uh, AGI got on the ropes. Bear Stearns, I believe they failed. You don't find uh, Dean Witter, not Dean Witter, um, Merrill Lynch anymore. They, they, they collapsed. So they used to be the largest broker in the, in the country. They're now owned, I believe, by uh, Bank of America. So the ripple effect occurred. China knows that. They know how to get out of it. They know the way to get out of it is to print money. Just print yuan. That's what they call their currency. I spent I spent um, a month in China back in 2009. I saw this building going on. I mean, you went into Shanghai, you went in to Beijing, and then there's another one that uh, I can't pronounce it. And it. And the cranes were just everywhere. I thought, wow. I thought there were a lot of cranes in Atlanta. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That that it's all there. So the government will bail them out. The president of China has basically said, I will not punish my citizens. They will get their homes that they bought. So he's got to reorganize. He's got to find out in these 20 contractors which ones are strong, which ones of them could survive, which ones of them pulled some hanky-panky and probably are going to spend some time in northern China for the rest of their life. Uh, he's, got to, he's got to arrange that, but he's got to bail it out. Now, the question then becomes, is he going to bail out the U.S. bonds? Is he going to, to uh, let the, um, the, the, the American hedge funds, the American financial banks, um, uh, Dean Witter and, and J.P. Morgan and uh, Goldman Sachs, is he going to let them hang out to dry? My, I don't know the answer to that question. I have my suspicions. China is not an island. If he lets them hang out to dry, there's going to be some consequences. And I don't think he wants to face those consequences. His question is going to be, should I print enough yuan to bail out the Chinese citizens? Should I print enough to bail out the Chinese banks, which most are owned by the government, so I'm quite sure he'll do that. And should I print enough to bail out the U.S. investors. I suspect he will. And then I want you to, with that being said, I want you to go to uh, page B1 of Saturday's Wall Street Journal. And the headline here is, China declares crypto dealings illegal. What does that mean? And, and is that timely? Remember, um, Evergrande just failed to make their bond payment to the U.S. dollar bonds. The same day, they come out and say dealing in cryptocurrency is illegal. Why would they do that? Because he's going to turn the printing presses on next week to bail these people out, which is going to devalue the yuan. What he is fearful of is, hey, the yuan is no, not worth anything more. Look how much of them they printed last year. Look how much they're printing now. 
I don't want to own any yuan. I'm going to own cryptocurrency. He stopped Jack Ma from creating the ant banking system, which was going to be a banking system built around your phone. Guess what they were going to probably give you the availability to do? Uh-uh. Shut that down. Pay attention to what you read in the paper. Then, then I want you to go to page uh, B12 in the Wall Street Journal and read this article here. Nike watchers should keep an eye on China. Yeah, it's, it's back here. Read that article. And what you're going to learn in that article is Ch Nike has shut down production of shoes in uh, Vietnam. Was it Vietnam? Yeah. Uh, why did they do that? He, they said because they are seeing a decrease in sales of shoes in their biggest growth market, China. Why have the Chinese stopped buying shoes? Because they're in fear of what's going to happen to their real estate holdings. Remember we talked about the ripple effect? Go see if you can find an article on Kentucky Fried Chicken's sales in China, McDonald's sales in China. I think you're going to see they're slowing down. So what does that mean to your portfolio? This is going to cause a crash in the Chinese stock market because it's happening in China. But go out to a nice clear lake and throw a stone out into it and see what the ripple effect is and see how far those ripples go. They don't stop. They don't stop. Um, so that brings me to where am I in my interpretation of the stock market. I've got $200,000 sitting on the sidelines. If, you, if you're a regular to this, you, I announced I was bailing. I saw, I saw some things happening that I believed was going to cause the market to correct, uh, dip. Um, first of all, the first number one will be a reaction to what's going to happen in China. Add to that the video I did yesterday where I talked about the Fed tapering. Fed has basically said, we're not going to buy uh, treasuries. We're, we're phasing out the, our purchase of treasuries and our, and our purchase of mortgage-backed securities that we've been doing for the last so many months. That's lack of. That's decrease in liquidity. They are basically saying we will be out of that uh, buying of U.S. securities within the next two years. Okay, that's lack of liquidity. That's going to pull the market down. Then we have the other thing, Joe's uh, proposals for another $3.5 trillion in uh, infrastructure and, and um, relief for our economy. I don't think that's going to happen before December the 31st. With that, those three things um, in mind, I'm expecting a dip. I'm expecting uh, a dip in the market. I, own no, I have no exposure. I have little exposure to China. I did five videos back in July through the 1st of August uh, where I said, I'm getting out of China, and you can go find those if you're interested in, in, in that sort of thing. But I do have one stock that is very dependent on China, and that is Tesla. Tesla expects 50% of its non-U.S. sales to come out of China and actually expects then the European uh, to come out of Germany and China. So this is this has got me puzzled, and I don't have I haven't made a decision what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to sell more of my Tesla or whether I'm going to sell more of my big six. Um, but I know the market's going to dip. And I know that I'm going to have an opportunity to buy back into some excellent stocks um, 
as a result of this dip. Now, the other thing I want to keep my eye on is cryptocurrency. We just saw the second largest economy in the world say transactions in cryptocurrency is illegal. They didn't say ownership is illegal. It's basically, I guess, saying, Richard Nixon said, I believe it was in 1977, transactions in gold is illegal in the United States. You can still hold your gold, but you can't go to the grocery store and buy an apple with it. That's what the U.S. government said in 1977. So what is the, it, China just, just threw another stone in the pond. What is the rep, ripple effect of that? What is our government going to say? Is that a good idea? What is the effect of that on my crypto holdings? I don't have a lot, but what is the effect? This is another thing to watch. This is why I think it's so important that you read. You understand history. You understand, that, again, this, this uh, Evergrande is just a repeat of this and this. And so if you want to know what's going to happen, just read these things. It's, it's all there for the taking. Okay, this is fun. This is exciting. This is what gets my blood boiling. This is what I get out of bed at six o'clock in the morning and sit down with my wife and say, let's talk about this. <laughs> and her eyes glaze over, but okay. Uh, if you want to be more involved in this, in, in my thinking, we meet, we meet my, my tribe um, every Friday evening. We talked about this last night. I'm making this video on Saturday. We talked about this. I, I, got, I got feedback from them, um, amongst other things. So what I'm trying to do is turn investing into a team sport. And if you want to join the team, go to bestofusinvestors.com, leave me your name and your email address, and I'll send you an invitation to our Discord. It's a lot more fun playing as a team as opposed to an individual. I just saw something, Jimmy Connor, on, on uh, talking about that, how lonely it is playing tennis and how much more fun it is playing in a team sport. All right, that's my Sunday take. Um, it's going to be an exciting week, and um, I'll let you know what I'm going to do in the future. Talk to you again soon.